I'm a mechanical engineer, and I have expertise in fluid dynamics. You can see on the right uh, high-speed movies about uh, blood drop impacts, and we also wrote a simulation code that uh, has uh, the same uh, physics and that can simulate uh, these impacts of drugs. I did my PhD uh, in 2001 at ETH Zurich, a dissertation on the deposition of drugs on solid walls. And uh, during my years in academia, I spent about 20 years in academia teaching fluid dynamics and heat transfer in uh, US universities. And I developed one area of expertise, which is the scientific basis of blood stain pattern analysis. I was lucky to lead a couple of uh, funded research projects on blood stain pattern analysis, funded by the US government, agencies like uh, the National Institute of Justice, uh, the Army Research Office, or NIST. Uh, NIST uh, helped create CSAFE, which is a center that promotes the use of statistics in forensics. And what I'm going to show you today is a statistical approach. I've written about 100 peer review scientific publications. Among those are 20 uh, related to blood stain pattern analysis. And those articles, they appeared uh, in the leading free dynamics and forensic journals. And uh, uh, from last year, I started uh, to work full time as a scientific consultant with my own company, which is called Struo LLC. Struo is a Latin word that means I build, I reconstruct. Um, so today, I'm going to introduce you to uh, some amazing capabilities that I start to understand by coming to this conference. Then I'll present the method to reconstruct cast of patterns, uh, the basics, the physics, then some results. Then I'll show you where to download the software. It's free. It does, doesn't mean it didn't cost uh, the government money to make it, but uh, it, it's free now. And uh, we will uh, think about future work and uh, analyzing the, the collaborators. So the first thing I've seen in this conference are a couple of uh, slides like this one, where they show the progress, the tremendous progress that has occurred in the documentation of crime scenes. So you see here uh, the good old way, uh, you could make a sketch and uh, then uh, draw a few blood spots, uh, typically uh, uh, less than 10, uh, and uh, use the manual inspection of photographs to do the interpretation of the crime. And now there's a bunch of tools, methods, and companies that allow to uh, document the crime scene with a much higher level of details and to produce much more data. Think about all these 3D measurements, uh, the photogrammetry technique, the laser scanning techniques. Uh, we also saw uh, uh, that uh, you can use, uh, uh, you can integrate that in cell phones. And uh, what is interesting is that you can collect much more data. And uh, we've made uh, blood uh, uh, spiders uh, using impact of uh, cylinder uh, parts on another cylinder uh, of, uh, of steel. And we could count with uh, software that we wrote up to 40,000 states, depending on the condition of impact. And what is cool is that now we have the tools to collect information about all those things. So with new tools, that's like science work. You always have people who build new tools, and then you have scientists who try to investigate what kind of new opportunities we can uh, use or we can develop. So the, the first uh, 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 thought that I have is, can we reconstruct crime scenes using all the stains that are documented, rather than picking up a few stains like uh, uh, investigators do like and now, they, they typically use 10 stains to reconstruct uh, the area of origin of uh, an impact pattern. Uh, and the other thing is, when you do 3D documentation, you rely on very high computing power that are in these 3D chips that you have now in your cell phones, then why do you, would you keep using the same good old uh, tangent or stringing method if you have a very powerful computer that can handle all this data in your pocket. So really the, my, my, my thought and my hypothesis and my desire is that we can consider the information from all the states, but of course uh, we know that uh, from the presentation of Zach this morning, 
Not all stains are equal. Some, they provide you a lot of information if they are on a nice painted smooth wall, for example, on cardstock. While other, if they land in, in sand, they will give you very little information. So the idea is to give each stain the weight she deserves in the uh, final determination of, uh, the, for example, the, the region of origin of the blood pattern. So you see here, uh, that's an example from a uh, casework that my company did uh, four years ago. So you, you had a couple of stains on the vertical wall, and you have uh, the stain number 10 that is almost round, while the stain uh, number 5 is elliptical. And uh, you have less uncertainty in the determination of the directional and impact angle if you have a shape like this than a, a round shape. So you see here those cones around the main direction, they uh, account for the uncertainty in the, uh, the direction of the blood drop when it hits the wall. And uh, you can use information from all those stains, but you have to understand that certain stains will have less uncertainty in their impact direction. So now let's apply this idea to the reconstruction of cast off uh, spatter patterns. So you see here uh, a, a little slide on the physics of uh, cast off uh, uh, generation of drops by cast off uh, mechanism in blood stain pattern analysis. So let me try to play the, the video. You see this tool, it's, it's bloody, and it's moved by the hand of uh, a scientist, hopefully, and it's releasing drops. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, the, the physical uh, principle, the physical process, uh, we can describe it just by using two forces. So you have the initial force, the, we could also call it the centrifugal force. It tends to bring the blood away from the tool, it's this force here, and we have another force that uh, tries to keep the blood uh, sticking on the tool, it's the capillary force uh, that is caused by surface tension. And if the tool is moved along uh, a, a rotational or, or circular trajectory uh, fast enough to have the initial force that overcomes the sticky force, you're going to release drops. And uh, once these drops are released, they, they are no more forces that uh, apply to them, and they're going to move tangentially to the motion of the weapon at the time when they were released. So that was shown. Uh, by uh, Williams and Mike Taylor in, in 2018. So they did really nice uh, videos. And uh, the fact that the drop moved tangentially to the, the motion of the weapon, uh, if you have a rotary motion, it's going to translate into a linear uh, pattern of stains on the, the wall. So you see this linear pattern. Uh, I had a stain <coughs> here, so there are a few millimeters inside. Uh, but they don't need to be uh, linear. If you do more complex motion, like with Samurai and Sword, you, you're going to see uh, these lines uh, bend uh, in one direction or the other. So what's available right now? Uh, pretty much uh, not much. Uh, so in other words, uh, people, when they see linear patterns of stains, they're going to say they are high chance that it's a cast of patterns. And uh, there are some software for example, it's a, a module for Leica that has been uh, produced by my friend, Eugène uh, Lichio. And um, uh, here you identify the plane in which uh, the weapon was moving. But uh, today there are no methods to directly reconstruct the motion of a weapon from inspection of a cast off spatter pattern. So here is what I'm proposing today. So imagine you come to the crime scene. You have your, your tool with you, I'll show you the tool later. And there are stains on this wall, and here you, the tool uh, works uh, according to uh, the, uh, with augmented reality, so it adds to the scene a blurb, this volume here, which corresponds to uh, the location where the weapon was when the drops were cast off. And then, click, click, you select a virtual weapon to start testing your scenarios and this is all happening at, at the crime scene so I select the baseball bat 
I can virtually move the baseball bat and see if the baseball bat can intersect the uh, most likely region where the cast of drops came from. Yes, it's all true. Okay, so that's compatible with uh, the event that I see. And this is a little bit of science fiction, but this is a project that my company uh, is doing with uh, Dr. Jurin T. Holt uh, in the Netherlands and his students. And they have uh, implemented MICO for the reconstruction of cast off in an augmented reality environment uh, from Microsoft. Uh, those goggles, uh, wh what's the name? Uh, HoloLens. HoloLens, the HoloLens, yeah. But uh, let's go see what is under the hood, right? Let's go see how the algorithm works. So basically, if you have one stain, you see here, assuming that the blood travels in straight line, you can draw the trajectory of the drop before it hits the wall, the wall is there. And uh, since we know that the cast of drops, they leave the waypoint tangentially, we can draw an infinity of circles that show the, the possible motion of the weapon. And then if we have two stains, we can draw a bit less circles, but still an infinity of circles. But you see, they will all have their center on this bisector. And then there's this, uh, this guy, Yuki, he probably resolved the problem saying that if you have three uh, straight uh, trajectories, uh, you can then have a single uh, circle, so for us a single possible weapon motion. So that was done three centuries before Christ. I couldn't find where he wrote this because, uh, you know, the, it's hard to do forensics at such large uh, time. So, so I found that uh, uh, a mathematician, he wrote a, a, a book describing all the possible results that Euclid could have found, uh, a, book, a, a book on Euclidean geometry, and his proposition 127 is exactly the one that we use to uh, determine the single posi possible weapon motion. And uh, if there are more than three stains, which typically you have on a cast up, I'll show you how we combine this using statistics. So, uh, but the first thing we need to do is to carefully measure the stain by fitting an ellipse on the stain. And then we get the two directional angle. So the gamma is the so-called directional angle and the alpha is the impact angle. And depending on the way, uh, on the quality of the pictures we have and also the, uh, the aspect ratio of the ellipse, we can uh, calculate uh, the uh, uncertainty on those two angles. And we do this for all the states, and the method can really accommodate an arbitrary number of states. And you see here an example of how the uncertainty is propagated. So if you have states that are very well defined, and the circle is close to the wall, and the drop trajectories are in the same plane, then you get a very narrow region in space where the weapon possibly move. But if you are far from the wall, if you drop trajectories, they are not exactly in the same plane. And if you have large uncertainties on the impact angle determination, for example, you have sand on your wall, uh, then the possible weapon motion uh, covers a much larger uh, amount of space. And uh, uh, that's how we propagate the uncertainty. And, uh, uh, then we, we, we can uh, put together all these possible regions of space using uh, a, a statistical approach uh, where we compute the uh, most likely region where the weapon was moving. And uh, you see here one of the first results that uh, we had. So there were experiments done with uh, the Castanova of Eugene Q. So it produced a very perfect circular motion. There's a rod that turns around the, an axis that is fixed. And the motion of the Castanova is the black uh, uh, arrow. And you see the reconstructed uh, region where the, the, the drops uh, came from by cast off. That is uh, here. So the red, green, and blue color, they correspond to different probabilities that the weapon casting of the drops was within within that red, green, or blue volume. So for example, if you look, the blue is, is hardly visible, but the green volume, you have more chance to uh, include the weapon than the red one. But the red one is the, the most likely place where the weapon would have been. And um, you can uh, 
It's really a 3D result you can see from different uh, locations. Uh, you see here another result. We scan the same stains, but on the left, you have a scan with uh, a cheap device, right? Uh, not the, the super expensive uh, Leica at $100,000 that you can <laughs> get. And you still get the result. Uh, so this time it's no longer the Casanova, it's, uh, it's a person that was manipulating a wooden uh, rod that was bloody and there were accelerometers and position trackers that would record the position. And uh, here you see that you have more uncertainty on the location where the blood came from, while if you have better pictures, better uh, accuracy of the, the position of the stain, you get a smaller region where the blood came from. Uh, so that's for the effect of the quality of the state measurement. What is also uh, cool I in our uh, statistical approach is that uh, if you have multiple events, like here two uh, cast off side by side, or here two cast off uh, at the same location but in a slightly different plane, the method will show you that uh, you have more than one event. You don't need to pick and choose the state. It will, it will appear just, just, uh, just like that. It's not magical. You need to play a bit with the resolution and, and so on and so forth. But you see clearly uh, that uh, those two blue regions, they, they, they point towards the fact that you had two uh, cast off motion. I also gave uh, a workshop at the IABPA conference where uh, we, we produced cast off and, and on the fly people were measuring the cast off uh, the way they typically measure it uh, and it was, it was a lot of fun to see uh, certain things but uh, then we, uh, they also recorded themselves with cell phones and here I, and I run my software to, uh, to, to determine that here uh, that's the likely region where the, the, the drugs were cast off and I tried my best to superpose the cell phone images, so it, it's not perfect, but you can see the upward motion and uh, it, it's not that far from the reconstructed region. So uh, let me play this again. Ah. So I have, I, have, I have more results. Uh, if you're interested, I can show you quite, quite a few. So uh, if you want to use the software, uh, you just go to GitHub and you, uh, you can download the software. It works uh, on any PC or Mac, uh, but you need to, uh, to be, a, I would say, a medium level uh, computer user because it's written in a computing language called Octave, so you first have to install also the open source package that can read this and do the calculation. Uh, and at the moment, the, the software only accounts for uh, six words that are a perfect box, right? Uh, but if you want to do more complex stuff, like if you have cast off on, on this, this chair, uh, just talk to me. We will find a way. Uh, uh, the beauty of having something on GitHub that is open source is that everybody can look under the hood. And, and I, I was trying to see what it means when you go to court. Uh, so, I don't know if you've seen this recent uh, review in Forensic Science International, it's, it's a British uh, uh, scientist, he's looked really carefully at uh, all the BPA software that were available now. Uh, he also tested one of us, not exactly the same, uh, and they say they have not undergone valida validation testing extensive enough to ensure a robust and reliable application in a forensic investigation. So, so that, that means uh, when you go to court, you should be ready to defend your, your method. And it's hard to do with a software that you cannot look under the hood, right? Uh, so here are least some of the criteria in the UK or in the US that uh, the judge uh, is supposed to use uh, to, is supposed to, use to, to uh, accept uh, reconstruction results based on the, as the method do we know the limitations on the method? Uh, has this method been reported? Uh, has the technique been tested, uh, subjected to peer review and publication? And do we know the potential error rate? And uh, uh, I, I think open source uh, is useful in this process. I don't know exactly how. Uh, but for example, the, the fact that we propagate the uncertainty on the measurement of the stains 
it really helps to define the uncertainty in the final results, and that will help to define the, uh, the what we call the error rate. So my future plans, uh, there are really two directions for a reconstruction method. The, the first one is uh, in crime scene investigation. There you can use anything. You can be shadow crimes, right? So you don't really need to to be uh, to have a, a validated method because you you just uh, evaluating hypotheses. You're trying to get leads, a and uh, in order to do that, I want to integrate uh, my software with uh, 3D forensic uh, uh, solutions using harnessing the computing power. Uh, I also want to integrate with biomechanics because uh, the kind of stuff you, you, you understand it's, it's also very important not only to find the position of the weapon but the position of the perpetrator. Uh, and uh, we want to add the direction of the weapon motion, so was the weapon moving from bottom to top or from up to down. And uh, we can also integrate the, the fact that the gravity bends the trajectories of the blood drop. So we've done that for an impact uh, spatter pattern. You see here, that's the region of origin of an impact pattern. I think we have the world record. We can reconstruct impact pattern two meters from, from the wall. Uh, while most uh, current methods, they can only uh, uh, handle patterns that have been created less than one meter from the wall. Uh, so that's one thing. But the other, for courtroom testimony, when you testify in court, you want to be damn sure of uh, what you're saying in court. So for that, we need more validation, either on uh, laboratory conditions or on crime scene data. That's why I, I keep bugging you to say, give me uh, data. I, I, I wanted to, to ask, uh, ask you, and also uh, th there's a lady, she, she has a, a case with a samurai sword. Uh, that, that I, I want to try my method. So, so basically my philosophy uh, is uh, to work along two axes. Uh, the first ax axis is to develop blood state pattern analysis by adding more physics, more fluid dynamics, typically. Uh, because if you think about it, uh, when you assume that the drops travel in straight lines, you, the, the, the amount of physics you have is, is exactly zero. Uh, you, you just use geometry. Branch of mathematics, but no physics. So we, we can add some uh, free dynamics, and that's typically something that uh, I've done in academia, but now I want to transition these models to uh, the user. And then the horizontal axis is to move the uncertainty from uh, a position where it's unknown to a situation where it's quantified and it's specific to the crime scene at hand, because there are some situations where you have very little uncertainty. Some other way you have a lot. And the key to do this is to use a statistical method and also methods that propagate the uncertainties. Uh, and uh, this is very important to quantify the uncertainty if you do court, uh, courtroom testimony and, and stuff. And uh, investigation, I'm sure they can benefit from both uh, contributions of more fluid dynamics and a better quantification of the uncertainty. So that's one of the activities of my uh, company. So time to acknowledge uh, the collaborators. So Scott, uh, he's a young engineer who wrote most of the code under my guidance. He also performed the experiment. Eugene Lichio, he's really big in photogrammetry and he's done some work on cast stuff and he provided us with the data, uh, some of the data to test uh, the software. Chris, uh, he's my uh, statistics uh, expert. He's an uh, associate professor at Iowa State University. Uh, then the, the money came from the National Institute of Standards via CSA. Uh, Yen, she's the one who, who helped me find the, the mathematical theorem uh, that shows that if you had three straight lines, there's only one, one uh, circle. I knew it, it could be proven, but she's a mathematician and she found that, that book from 200 years ago. So, and these are the, this is the team at the uh, Netherlands University that has been playing with the HoloLens and my code. So uh, if you want to uh, ask me, contact me, it, it, I have this very simple email address. You can see my, my publication on the repository of the university where I was working uh, until last year. Uh, it's open access, most of them, or, or you can get them through Google Scholar by emailing me. And here are the publications. Uh, typically the first one is the one that describes the method, but there are other ones that give you a little bit of context. And uh, Thank you very much. Any questions, so welcome.